Hi, this is Anil from Pristine. In this session, we'll talk about portfolio management, which carries around 5% weight of the CFA level 1 curriculum. So, although the weight is less here, but the kind of questions asked from this particular topic is quite difficult. So, you will get 2 or 3 questions out of 12 questions from this topic that would be really difficult. So, so idea is to understand the concept thoroughly from this particular topic and one of those con concept is the expected risk and expected return calculations. So the investment objectives are based on only two components. The one, first one being the expected returns and the second one being the expected risk from this particular investment. So what is the expected return? So expected return is the return you expect to get when you invest in a particular security. So and when we talk about the portfolio returns, so a portfolio can have can have more than two items. So more than greater than two stocks or securities so if if we talk about the returns from the complete portfolio so that return would be the weighted average or the average returns of the securities in the portfolio so suppose I have two asset portfolio with me and the asset is asset A and asset B and the return of both the assets are denoted by RA and RB. Then the expected return on the portfolio would be the weight of A into RA plus weight of B into RB. So this is nothing but the expected average returns and what is this weight a so weight a is the amount of a in the portfolio upon the total dollar value of the portfolio or you can say the total amount of portfolio right so this is the return which is simply the weighted average of all the returns now the second component is the standard deviation which is a proxy of risk so this risk is denoted mathematically by standard deviation so what is the risk here the risk is or the standard deviation is the the dispersion the dispersion of the returns from this mean so if the returns average returns quoted here is mu and if the actual returns are not mu but slightly lower or higher than mu so that constitutes the risk so had that actual return being exactly equal to this mu we would have said it the risk is zero but normally that doesn't happen in real life so we say that the actual return would be slightly higher or slightly lower than the expected return so that dispersion around this mean is called as risk or standard deviation or sigma so standard deviation for a two asset portfolio would be uh, square root of the weighted average the the weight of a into the standard deviation square of a similarly weight of b into standard deviation square of b plus 2 into weight a weight b into covariance between asset a and asset b's return so now this covariance a and b can also be expanded so this becomes correlation between a and b's return into into sigma of a or the standard deviation of a into standard deviation of b 
so this complete expression under the square root sign is the standard deviation of the portfolio so this standard deviation of the portfolio is always less than this portfolio standard deviation is always less than or equal to the standard deviation of a plus standard deviation of b right so with this small background in mind let us try to solve this problem so it says consider a portfolio with 30000 in equity and 20000 in bonds so the complete value of the portfolio portfolio is 50k and out of this equity is 30k and bonds is 20k now if i ask you what is the weight of equity weight of equity is 30k upon 50k so which is 60% similarly the weight of bonds is 20k upon 50k which is 40% right so weight is known to us also in this table they have mentioned what is the expected return uh, from the from the equity and what is the expected return from the bonds similarly what is the standard deviation from the equity and what is the standard deviation from the bond so as we remember the expected return from the portfolio is nothing but the weighted average of asset a and the weighted average sorry so this becomes ra so weighted average of asset a is return and asset b is return so here w a is 60% which is 0.6 ra is 13% similarly w b is 40% 0.4 into the return is 10% so this becomes 13 into 6 which is 7.8% plus 0.4 into 10% which is 4% so it becomes 11.8% so the return is 11.8% so B and C both can be right so the next step is to find the standard deviation of the portfolio so as we have seen that the standard deviation of the portfolio is standard deviation of a so it is mm, standard deviation of the portfolio would be square root of standard deviation of e square into w e square plus w b square that is bond and standard deviation of bond square plus 2 into w a w b into correlation into sigma a sorry sigma e sigma b right so we have all the values with us simply punching these numbers in and we will get a answer of 15.07 percent so standard deviation of the portfolio is 15.07 percent and we have already seen what is the average return and so the final answer is b now one interesting thing to note here is so this was an asset of uh, sorry a portfolio of two assets and suppose our portfolio expands to say three assets so then the weighted average will remain the same this weighted average will expand till the third asset as well so finally let me write it in a separate sheet so finally if we have n asset portfolios so the weighted average or the return of the portfolio would be w a r a plus w b r b and so on till w n r n 
and similarly the standard deviation of or the variance of the of the portfolio would be w a square sigma a square plus w b square sigma b square plus w c square plus sigma c square so on so if we have n sa so it will go on till w n square sigma n square plus we will have the second component which would be 2 into w a w b covariance of a and b then we have w 2 into w b into w c into covariance of b and c and this will also keep on going till each and every asset is taken in the covariance form so you will have n unique terms here because the ss are n so n unique terms here and you will have nc2 which is n into n minus 1 upon 2 unique terms n into n minus 1 upon 2 unique terms in this case okay so so most of the people ask what happens if the ss go uh, the number of ss in the portfolio is three and number of ss in the portfolio goes to four so you simply need to write uh, a, to remember this particular formula and you can expand it till any number of ss all right so this was about the expected risk and the expected return so if if you have any doubt any query regarding this particular topic feel free to write me at anil at eneve.com i hope you have enjoyed the session thanks for listening hope to see you in the next class thank you